Hi, everyone, and welcome to All Space Considered Extra. This is a little extra segment that we wanted to share with you because we thought you might like to learn how to make beautiful images from the Juno mission that's at Jupiter. Maybe you've seen some of these beautiful images on social media, but unlike other NASA missions, most of the gorgeous images we've seen are done by citizen scientists. That's right. Juno has made all the raw images available on its website, so anyone can make beautiful Juno images with just a few tips and tricks. So, what's the Juno mission at Jupiter, you ask? Well, our Juno correspondent, Patrick So, is here to tell us all about the Juno mission and also teach you how to make your own images. So, Patrick, what is Juno? Juno is uh, a NASA spacecraft uh, that is designed to study the planet Jupiter. It was launched on August 5th, uh, 2011, and it got to Jupiter on July 4th, 2016. So uh, Juno has this really strange orbit where it, it uh, goes very close to Jupiter, as close as 2,600 miles. And uh, at that point, called Perijove, is traveling nearly 130,000 miles uh, per hour. And then it, it goes out into this very elongated orbit about 4 million miles away from Jupiter. And this whole orbit is a 53-day orbit. Every time that Juno gets close to Jupiter in a perijove, that's a great opportunity for uh, Juno to turn on all its scientific instruments. It sounds like a great place to take some beautiful pictures. It does. Uh, Juno has a camera called JunoCam, and has on every perijove, uh, we're up to 28 right now, uh, as of July 25th of, of this year, um, has taken uh, many uh, close-up pictures with showing spectacular uh, atmospheric features of Jupiter. So here are some of our favorites from All Space Considered. A lot of spacecraft have visited Jupiter, the Pioneer missions, the Voyager missions, and a mission called Galileo in the 1990s. And they all took images, uh, but none are quite so beautiful as the ones taken by Juno. So today what we're going to do is we'll get into imaging of how you could turn these raw images into something like this. So we'll be using GIMP. GIMP is a free open source image processing software. To download GIMP, you need to go to GIMP.org. You can hit this button to get to the next page and find the version designed for your computer. Then hit the download button. Your computer will instruct you from there. Once you've downloaded your GIMP, and you can go ahead and open it up. There we go. What you're going to get is something that looks like this when you first open a GIMP. Go to Windows and uh, go to a single window mode, which I like, so you can have all the pieces joined together. And then you're going to go to the web. There's a website I uh, listed here. You go go and select any image that you like. Go down here and just find something that looks interesting. Like uh, oh, this looks interesting. You click on it. You click on image images, and then you get a message. You're gonna save a image set as a zip file. So we are familiar with zip files. You have to uh, download it. This is going to my download folder. So downloads. And it looks like, uh, actually like, looks like this. And then when you extract it, you get your five images here of your blue, green, there's your red, uh, your raw image, and your uh, other image, which is the map projected image. So that's how you get the images. So here's how you start. 
Well, go to image and make sure you're in RGB mode, red, green, and blue, not grayscale. So with your image set, all you have to do is, let's start with the blue image, and we can do this in order. So blue, we just drag and drop into the GIMP window, and your blue appears in this layer uh, display. And here's your green, drag and drop. They all line up, so it's, it's kind of easy to do this. And there's your green above the blue in the layer menu. And there's the red, take the red. And then lastly, uh, take your map image, which is this one here. And uh, here. And uh, this indicates I'm looking at the map projected layer. I'm gonna move that up. So you can actually move things in the layers by holding down your uh, left mass, uh, mouse button and uh, dragging to where you want it. So I basically drag the map projected layer from where it was here to the top there. So you want that at the top. And then the next thing is just for clarity, um, I'm just gonna color code uh, each of the red, green, and blue layers. They, these were taken through red, gr green, and blue filters in the Juno cam. So uh, I'm gonna go right click, go to color tag, go to blue, make that blue, right click, uh, select green from color tag, do the same for red. So in this layer menu, everything hides each other layer below. So the top layer is your map projected layer, and you, you can't see what's, you can't see the red or the green or the blue. Each one hides the other layer below. So to see this, you can click off, to see the red or the green or the blue, start clicking on the eye. This makes the top layer invisible, and then you see the red layer. This is the uh, green layer, and this is the blue layer. So they're kind of in gray color. So what you want to do is you want to turn them into the red and green and, and blue it was intended to. So to do this, you go and select, uh, we're gonna select blue and we're gonna go to colors and go all the way down to colorize. Click on that, the box comes up and you notice it turns into this cyan color. And for the blue, we want to turn this uh, layer into the primary blue color. So primary blue on the hue here, we'll drag this slider here, is 0.666. So we're going to get somewhere close to it, and, and then we'll leave it at that. There we go. That's good. And we want the saturation to be turned all the way up so we get a nice deep primary blue, although we've kind of blown out some of the detail here. So we're going to turn the lightness down to negative 0.5, somewhere about there. And then hit OK. And you notice that the gray image is now blue. Do the same with green. So turn your green layer on, clicking on that icon. Make sure you click on the correct layer. So green, colors, colorize, down to 0.33, saturation up to one, lightness down to negative 0.5, there, and click. Now turn on your red, red layer, colorize, and for the hue, of red, it's all the way down to zero. And saturation turned up way up to one. Lightness again down to negative 0.5. Right up there. Click OK. And you're all set with these uh, three colors here. Now, the, again, you know, the red, the green, uh, the red hides the green and blue. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix these colors and to mix them, we're gonna to have to use a blending mode. And you notice here, right on top here, above opacity, there's a mode. And right now, normal means that the red basically is opaque and hides uh, anything below it. So we're gonna to have to allow the light from the green and the blue to uh, mix with the red. And to do that, we can go to this blending mode. If you just click down on normal, that down arrow, there it is. 
you see all these different types of modes, there's lots of them. What we're going to do is we're going to go down to screen and we're going to choose screen. And this is like uh, analogous to projecting, say, a red image and then the same image in green over it. And the mix of the two colors produces this yellow. Now we want the blue to also show through with the green and the red. So we're going to do the same, normal. From normal to screen. There we go. And uh, there we have all the three colors mixed. So for the top layer, we're going to use the so-called map projected image that was available on the Juno website when I screened the map projected image with the red, green, and blue, I found I got better results than if I tried to adjust each individual red, green, and blue image. So I found that if, if I were to blend the map projected image with the RGB, um, I, was, I got a really nice result from it, and enhancement details looked as good as the ones I've seen uh, posted on the Juno website by the public. You can do this as well and, and make it pretty. So, and that's the goal: make it pretty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean okay. that. They're not, I mean that's all they're asking is is enhance these images. Here's, here's what we're going to give you: enhance it. So that's what I did. I used them all. So now, using all these images, let's try different blending modes. We'll go to the top layer here. Make sure I select it, and we're going to do a blending mode. And we're going to find a blending mode that we really like. So you can choose anything you want here and you can experiment. Let's try screen and that gives us something more like a true color version or a little bit lighter of what Jupiter would look like to our eyes. Maybe we'll go down and uh, select something different. Let's select vivid light. Ooh, that looks good. We might use that as basis for adjustment. We maybe try, let's try linear light. That looks good, let's work with this. Next, we want to adjust the curves. You can go down to, go to colors, and uh, go to curves, and uh, you can then start playing around uh, with your uh, values here. Curves lets you change the brightness, up or down, of the pixels in your image. Along the bottom x-axis, the brightness values are plotted, and the y-axis shows what brightnesses those pixels will be changed into. A straight 45 degree diagonal line means no change. When you pick a point on the curve, the pixels of that brightness will be changed into a different brightness level. Moving the curve up makes them brighter and down makes them dimmer. Just get to the way you would like it, say something like that, uh, like that, that looks good. And once you're happy with the image, just click OK. And yeah, so I selected green, so the green layer, and I can go to uh, curves, and I can just adjust the green. So uh, if I took all the green out, then you only have the uh, red and blue, which gives you magenta. So um, this is just blasting out with more green there. So you can do that as well. All right, so uh, to save it, you just go file and, uh, and then save, and then it's a .xcf file, and then save it in a folder that you want, and just hit save. Save your project, because you want to not lose all the work that you've done. And then to save the image that you want, you, go to, you don't uh, save as, you go to file, and you export as, and uh, you can name your file here, and uh, it, can be either PNG, portable, portable network graphics, or, or a JPEG, you can change that to JPG, and then hit export, and then you save your file. If you want to see a larger portion of the image, uh, there's a percentage here, I'm only seeing 50%, and here's 100%, so you can go in as, as far as you like, good. but then it gets really pixelated. So with that, you should have all the tools you need to try it yourself. We tried it with a few of our staff. Many of them had no experience with image processing before, and this is what they came up with on the first try.
Okay, I'm going to show you a few neat things you can do artistically. Three. So you can take any image off the web as long as it's a PNG type of image. And here you, I have a Juno transparency PNG. If I click on that, it gives me uh, the Juno spacecraft uh, superimposed against Jupiter. And you can change this scale by going to, to the layer. And I have the layer selected, so make sure you do that. And go to yeah, scale and make that say 500 and scales down. And I go to layer and you can uh, see transform and you can rotate it if you want um, 90 degrees. The other thing you can do with the image, let's just go to that, or artistic things, uh, go to filters and uh, there's different types of enhancements. Just go, let's, let's go light and shadow, supernova, and you can move around. Supernova, you can change its color. Put down this color scale, you can see do something like that. Uh, so there's a lot of options here. You can explore them, uh, play around with them. Um, there's an artistic uh, menu here. Um, I kind of brought in this little cat face here. And, uh, <laughs> and I was every planet to... needs a cat face. <laughs> yes. And I'm... Well, I don't want to rotate, so let's go back to... Set. Click on this move tool. I'm going to move it around. There we go. I was going to move it over here, and I thought I'll just go and use a layer, a scale layer. I'll make that about 200, maybe 200 pixels. And so it will fit into that cyclone right there. And then uh, it might be too obvious, so you can take the cat face and where the opacity is, you can actually reduce it and make it a little more transparent and kind of blend into uh, that layer there. So. That's actually really cute. <laughs> <laughs> so you can play around with it and, you know, and, and change the colors of Jupiter. This is the creative part of the artistic uh, Create your own artistic impression of Jupiter. So that's kind of a, about it. I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint and I'll show you some of the artist uh, creations, uh, which I thought were kind of neat. Here they are. So that's it. You have all the tools you need. The final step is to share them with us so we can share them with others. At the end of this video, you will see all of our social media tags and an email for those who are not on social media where you can send us your image. With your permission, we may post it on our social media sites or even on our website. So Patrick, thank you so much for teaching us. That was great. And we look forward to seeing your beautiful images. We definitely do. Have a great time creating them. And don't forget to look back at our website.